Hi, I'm Brent Hull. This is Building with History. They say they don't build them like they used to. Is that true? Did the master builder and craftsman of yesteryear have access to secrets that we should know today? Well, yes and no. There were certainly things they knew, but they aren't necessarily secrets. A careful study of historic trade and pattern books reveals a treasure trove of information that we can use for building today. In this segment, we're going to be talking about columns and how they're supposed to be used in building. If you're looking for columns today, it's hard to ignore them. They're on the 5 o'clock news when we see the White House. They're on banks. They're in our neighborhoods. They're everywhere. But if you look closely with an historical bent, it might seem like pieces are missing or the proportions are wrong. What's going on? Let's find out. To start, let's define what is right. I mean, who did it right? Well, a quick answer is the Greeks and then the Romans. I mean, they're where it all begins. A perfect example is the Parthenon, which has long been a model of perfection and is considered one of the truly great buildings of antiquity. Studying this building reveals the Greeks' fascinating inspiration. Essentially, they looked around and discovered that man and nature is governed by wonderful rules of proportion. They noticed that the Nautilus shell grows in a pattern and that this pattern follows a set of rules. Closer inspection revealed a perfect rule in perfect proportions. We call it today the golden ratio. It's a ratio that gives each part a proportional relationship to the whole. The golden rectangle shows us this relationship. If we make a square on the left side, I create another golden rectangle on this end. I do that again and I have another rectangle. We do that a few more times and we see that all the parts relate to one another. If I take the outside corner and connect these together, we end up with a spiraling ring that, of course, reveals how the Nautilus shell got its shape. The Greeks and Romans found this golden ratio in the human body and designed their buildings based on these elements. If we now take this golden ratio and place it over the Parthenon, we see that it was a ratio that defines everything about this building. The height, the size of the entablature, the pediment. This isn't just a trick, but a proportioning system that was used and can still be used to design our homes and buildings today. We have a name for this proportioning system. It's called the Classicism, or the Five Orders of Architecture. Tuscan, Doric, Ionic, Corinthian, Composite. Each order represents a different group of rules, and each is used depending on the type of building. Okay, it's obvious that these rules make sense, and by using them we create buildings we naturally relate to. But how can we use them effectively today? How can we build with history? Two things, parts and proportion. First thing you must do is get all the parts right. There are just two pieces, the column and the entablature. These are fancy names for post and beam, and when one goes without the other, it looks naked or like something is missing. Here on the right side is an historically accurate column and entablature relationship. This makes sense as the column looks like it can carry the weight. Notice now the house on the left. The relationship between the column and what it is holding up is thrown off because the beam or the entablature is missing. Not only makes the roof look small and disproportionate, but the columns are suddenly too skinny and weak. This leads to the second point proportions. If you leave off p these pieces, it throws off the proportion. Here's another house with funny proportions. This time the brick columns run directly up into the ceiling of the porch. What's missing? That's right, the entablature again. These columns look way too skinny. See how this messes up the proportion and scale? You need both parts in order for your home to look right. It also helps with those parts of the right size. Here are some rules to remember. The entablature or the beam is usually one quarter or one fifth the height of the column. Thus you have an eight foot column. The beam should be 18 inches to two feet tall. The column has a height to width ratio. For every inch of width, the height should increase by one foot. Thus again, our eight foot column should be eight inches, eight inches in diameter at the base. Use this second rule as a minimum. Try to err on the wider side in the width of columns. Okay, that's today's segment. Remember, there's a ton to learn from history. You just have to know where to look. I'm Brent Hull. Follow these rules and you'll be building with history.